Hey everybody, Jack Clips Painting here with another tutorial. I apologize about my voice. I'm fresh back from LVO and I'm kind of getting over the con crud a little bit. That's not going to stop me from painting for you guys. We got one of these brand new Chaos Space Marine models from Blackstone Fortress. And we're going to be doing a multi-part series on how to do Black Legion. So this video is going to be how to get your Chaos guys to tabletop. And then beyond that, we're going to do tournament standard. And then beyond that, we're going to go into sort of a final touches masterclass video. Starting off by doing some black primer. This is also going to serve as our black armor base coat. So we want to make sure to get the whole model nice and smooth. And then after that, I'm going to grab some necromancer cloak from army painters. This is a very, very dark gray. And we're going to do kind of a top down highlight on our black armor. And I've got this paint thinned out with some flow improver. And I'm kind of babying it a little bit. Black can be a little difficult to do because you want the armor to read as black to the eye and not gray. So make sure you don't overpower the black armor with these grays as we highlight them up. Next, I'm going to grab some dark warm gray from Pro Acryl. This is a little bit of a medium to darker side gray. And we're going to focus highlight some areas of his armor, like those little exhaust bells the uh, peaks of those horns on his armor, the uh, shoulder pads, top of the feet, that kind of thing, just to pop those details out a little bit more. Again, don't go too heavy with these grays. This is gonna be our brightest spot highlight for our black armor, just to get that detail popped out and get us a nice kind of black to gray gradient. And this is a bright as we're gonna go before we do our edge highlights. Next, we're going to grab some burnt red, also from Pro Acryl. This is a nice dark maroon kind of red. And he's got some dangly cloth hanging off of his armor, and I really like the red and black color scheme that the Black Legion has. So we're just going to base coat this cloth with our burnt red. Make sure to take your time, do a couple of thin coats so that way the cloth is nice and smooth, and then we'll move on from there. After that, I'm going to grab some Carmine Red. This is kind of a blood red color from Vallejo Model Color. And we're going to start glazing. And basically what we're doing here is I'm mixing up our paint to be super, super thin and watery, getting some paint into my brush, and then I'm lightly touching my brush to a paper towel. And that paper towel is sucking out like 90% of the moisture in the brush. So you're left with a very small amount of very thin, watery paint. And we're very quickly going to run the brush over our areas, pulling that small amount of pigment towards where we want it to build up. So down towards the bottom of the cloth to build up a gradient. And then I'm taking my airbrush and very lightly passing some air over those areas to dry it out. Even without an airbrush, it dries very quickly if you're doing it right. So don't worry too much about that. After a few coats of that, I'm going to grab some bold pyrrole red. This is a very bright fire engine red color, and we're just going to repeat the same step, except that I'm not going to cover the entire thing. I'm just going to do one quick pass over everything, and then with the subsequent layers, I'm going to be pulling that super thin watery pigment down towards the tip slash bottom of the cloth pieces, and it's going to take about three to four passes. And again, in between passes, I'm hitting it with the airbrush to help it dry out really fast. And the number of passes that you want to do on something just depends on how vibrant you want the color. So carmine red, then bold pyrrole red, and we want a little bit more of that bold pyrrole red. So I'm doing a few more passes of that than I did before. Next, we're gonna grab some Agent Orange from Pro Acryl. This is a very bright, vibrant orange color. And we're gonna do a final little glaze highlight on our cloth. And I'm only touching about the bottom quarter of that area. So right near the bottom of these hanging cloth pieces. And I'm doing the exact same thing, getting a little bit of watery paint in my brush, touching it to that 
paper towel so that it wicks away most of the moisture. So I'm just leaving a very, very thin, transparent layer of paint onto the model. And then between passes, I'll hit it with the airbrush just to get some air on there if I need it to dry out a little bit faster. And be very careful with this last one because when you transition to a really bright color like this, it's really easy to put too much pigment on there or not enough pigment and it looks kind of splotchy. So just do, uh, I think I did about three to four passes on this just because I want a thin transparent layer of orange over our brightest red to really pop that color out. After that, we're gonna do the leather bits on the model. I've got some mahogany, which is a really dark maroon brown color. I really like this full bodied brown color from Pro Acryl. And we're just gonna do his gun belt, pouches, holster, anything on the model that might be a leather piece that you wanna be a nice dark brown leather. Super easy, we're just base coating those things in there and stopping after that. Now I'm going to grab some heavy brown. This is a game extra opaque color from Vallejo. And he's got some, what I assume to be some kind of cloth wrap going around his holster and also underneath the uh, thigh strap of his uh, holster belt. And I kind of want to build that up to be sort of like a dirty bandage style cloth. And so I like to start off with the heavy brown for that and then work up the bone colors on top of that. But all we're doing for the tabletop standard is base coating those in with the heavy brown. So just take your time, make sure you don't splotch paint on stuff you don't want it on and base coat those in. Now we're going to do all the steel metallics. I've got some black metal from Scale 75. You know how much I love this dark gunmetal steel color for 40k. So we're just going to pick out all the stuff that we want to be a steel color, focusing on his bolter in this clip right here. But you can see afterwards that I do all the joints because on my Chaos Space Marines, I like the joints to be a metallic color. And on my Loyalist Marines, I like the joints to be kind of a black rubber color. Um, not exactly sure why, I just think it looks better. It almost makes the Chaos Marines seem a little bit more uh, outdated or older like they're supposed to be because they've been, you know, tromping around in the warp for who knows how long. So I like this kind of pre-heresy look for the uh, metallic joints and that sort of thing. So just base that stuff in and then we're going to move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna do all the trim pieces with Decayed Metal from Scale 75. This is a very dark, reddish, coppery gold color, almost like a uh, rusted out brass. I know brass doesn't rust, but it's got some of that element to the color of it. And I like doing the base coat of all the gold trim on Chaos with Decayed Metal because it makes it look older, it makes it look weathered, more aged, and it's just a darker, more brassy bronze color than just starting off with a mid-tone gold. Eventually, when we get to the higher levels of painting in subsequent videos on this guy, we are going to shine up that gold to be a very shiny uh, kind of reddish gold brass color that I like for Chaos. But for our first step, just to get this guy tabletop, we're going to block all that in with decayed metal. And he's ready for a wash, so I'm going to pull out the Army Painter wash system. I've got some dark tone, which is basically black wash, and some quick shade wash mixed medium, which is our medium for mixing up the Army Painter washes, and some flow improver. I'm not going to gloss coat this guy because I like my Chaos Marines to be a little bit more dirty and a little bit more dingy, but after applying the wash all over the model, I am going to clean up any big pools that start forming on the model. So as you see me apply the wash here, I'm going to be putting it over the entire model, slopping it around, making sure it gets over the entirety of the model and gets into all those details. And then I'm going to put some water in my brush and wick away the excess. 
so that way we don't have any big coffee stains anywhere, especially like his uh, big armor panels or his bright red cloth because we want that stuff to stay nice and vibrant. And another thing that I do uh, with the quick shade wash mixing medium, if it gets a little bit too thin, especially on models with tons of metallics, is while the wash is still wet, I'll actually come in with some pure dark tone and put those onto those metallic areas, such as his joints and his gold trim pieces to make sure I have a lot of contrast there, where the dark tone with the quick shade wash mixing medium is a little bit thinned down. It's not as full body as the pure dark tone. And I want that for all the other details but for the metallics, I'm going to come in with pure dark tone. Here he is post wash. All those details are starting to pop out. He's looking like a pretty clean model so far. But one thing I want to do before we do any more painting is go ahead and give this guy a matte varnish. With all these different paint brands and colors and the wash on there, there's lots of areas in the models with different finish and that that means is some areas are matte, some are shiny, some are kind of satin, and I want a uniform finish on this guy because the goal of this video is to get your Black Legion guys ready for the table. So if you don't have enough time to paint your whole army all the way up to a tournament standard or a display standard right off the bat, I want to show you guys a way to get an army on the table really fast, start playing with your models, start enjoying them. And here he is, the matte varnish is totally dry. So this is what he looks like at a tabletop standard. You've got all of your basic colors on there, a little bit of airbrush pop, a little bit of glaze pop on those pieces of cloth. And all you gotta do is stick him on a base and he's ready to go. And this also sets us up to be able to go up more levels into the tournament and to display levels. So make sure to check back next week and I'll be doing those videos then. Catch you next time.